بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹویلو فار بیسک انجینئرنگ میکینکس ان دس ٹاپ ان دس لیکچر وی ووڈ کنٹینیو آور ڈسکشن اباؤٹ چیپٹر نمبر فور فار دا مومنٹ آف اے فورس اینڈ وی ووڈ لک ایٹ وٹ از کال دا پرنسپل آف مومنٹس اینڈ دین وی ووڈ یوز دس پرنسپل آف مومنٹس اینڈ وٹ ایور وی لرن ان لیکچر نمبر ٹو سالو سم ایگزامپلس ریلیٹڈ ٹو مومنٹس Okay, so uh, first of what is the principle of moments, uh, which is also called Varignon's theorem. Uh, so basic uh, principle of the moments is that a moment of a force is uh, sum of the moments of the components of that force. So anytime you have a force F, which can be written down into its components. So we, we see that if we have a force F, which can be written as the sum of two other forces F1 and F2 and we want to find the moment of this total force F around some point O uh, we can just find uh, the moment of the force directly which is just R times F uh, R cross F R is the position vector and F is the force vector or we could just uh, find the moments of these two forces first and then we can add them together. Both of these uh, methods are equivalent and uh, in that sense principle of moments is a direct application of one of the basic properties of cross products which is uh, that cross products are associative under vector addition uh, as we saw in our previous lecture. So uh, sorry the cross product are distributive under addition okay so uh, but uh, something so simple and trivial uh, why does it have uh, a name to it and it is called with no theorem also because it is very very useful tool uh, sometimes we would as we would see in examples today sometimes it's much much easier to use this side of the it, to compute this side of the equation at other times it is much easier to compute this this side of the equation uh, so these things would get more uh, clear as we see some examples uh, so here we have a very simple example in in two dimensions that we have this force f which is given in this blue arrow and we want to find the moment of this force around this point o so the direct method to find this force the moment of this force is to find the um, the perpendicular distance which is this distance d and as you can see that finding this distance d is is it's not very obvious uh, we can always use some trigonometry to figure out what d is but uh, at least it's not obvious what this the value of this d is going to be but if we were to use the principle of moments we can always break down this force f into its x and y components so here we have its x component and its y component and now the perpendicular distance of the x component is just y and the perpendicular of component of the y the perpendicular distance for the y component is just x so the principle of using the principle of the moments we can simply say that the moment around the point o is just fx times y minus fy times x again note that here we are using uh, the scalar moment because we are looking at 2D, 2D cases uh, this is a two dimensional system so moment can either be positive uh, clockwise or counterclockwise we don't have to worry about the vector form of moments when we are dealing in two dimensions okay so uh, some in some of the cases this uh, this calculation is easier than this other calculation so that is why this principle of moments is a very useful tool okay uh, so here are the important points of everything that we have covered so far so first off we saw that the moment of the force is the tendency of the force to rotate that body and then we looked at the definition of the moment of the force using f times d where d is the uh, perpendicular distance or what we call the shortest distance to the point o and uh, the th other thing that we learned in chapter number in lecture number 11 was the moment of our force in, in vector form which is just given by 
वेक्टर आर क्रॉस वेक्टर एफ ओके सो सो लेट स्टार्ट विद लुकिंग सम लुकिंग एट सम एग्जाम्पल्स सो वी हैव वी वॉन्ट टू डिटर्मिन द मोमेंट ऑफ द फोर्स अबाउट द पॉइंट ओ द फोर्स इज गिवन एज हेयर एंड वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द मोमेंट ऑफ दिस फोर्स अबाउट द पॉइंट ओ सो लेट्स यूज आवर बोर्ड टू फिगर आउट दिस मोमेंट सो वी हैव this here so i would just draw it as a straight diagram so this angle is 30 degrees and the force is something like this and this angle is 45 okay and uh, this the length of this bar is given to be Okay, and the magnitude of force is five kilometer. Okay, and so our question again is to find the moment of the force about the origin, and I am going to assume uh, so this has so I know that we again is going to be counterclockwise is positive. Okay. Uh, so uh, the force is already given. The magnitude of the force, the magnitude of the force is just five kilonewtons, uh, but we need to find the perpendicular distance. And as it is shown in the diagrams, the perpendicular distance is going to be something like this. So this angle is ninety degrees. Okay. Uh, and if we use some trigonometry, we can simply Say that this angle is going to be equal to 75 degrees. So, uh, so this angle is going to be 45, and this angle is going to be 30. You add the two together, and you get 75 degrees. And so this distance is d. So this is equal to f times d. But here you can already see that using this right angle triangle, that d is just equal to 3 times sine of 75 degrees. So this is F times D. So three times sine of 75 degrees. So this turns out to be equal to five kilo newton times three times sine of 75 okay. meters. So you can do the math. This is the result. Okay. So this is the first method to uh, to solve for the the force. But we can always use the principle of moments. So let's try to use the principle of moments. So I can say that this was method one. Okay. So now I want to do the second method. um where i want to use the principle of moment so we want to use the principle of moment okay uh so we would like to break this force into its x and y component and because this angle is 45 degrees so i can say that it would have this x component and this y component so the x component of the force fx is just going to be so this is fx and this is fy Okay, so f x is just going to be equal to five times sine of forty five, maybe cos is better, but sine of forty five is equal to cos of forty five. Get a little f y is equal to five times sine of forty five k newton. Notice that I am writing them as scalars. So this is the magnitude of the x component. This is the magnitude of the y component. Uh, and so, so the next step is to simply use that the moment of the force is equal to f x times the distance of for the x f y times f y. So what is the x? The x is the perpendicular distance 
I should rather not use this DXMB byte. Let me just draw them here. So, what is this distance? This is going to be equal to uh, 3 times sine of 30 degree. And this is the perpendicular distance for the x component of our force. So, we have sine of 30 degree. And for the y component, we are going to have this times cos of 30 degree times 3. So, I have to have a 3 here also. So, let me just rewrite it. So, this is fx times 3 cos of sine of 30 plus fy times 3 cos of 30. Okay, uh, so we plug in the values of fx and fy here and we get the total value. Uh, so both of these methods are correct. Whichever one you find you are more comfortable with, you can use it. Uh, so the important point to make here is that in method 1, you uh, need to use more of trigonometry. In method 2, you would just need to use Cartesian vectors. Uh, and you have to be careful that you are measuring the correct distances okay uh, so again we have this another third method here uh, so this is method number one as i have explained and so this is the second method again very uh, similar to what i have explained okay and notice that i have made a typo so these these forces because i have defined it to be positive in the counterclockwise direction so this is going to be negative also and these two are going to be negative like that because we dividing the positive in the counterclockwise direction okay and um, so we can also uh, choose clever axes for x and y to simplify our problem which is done in this third case where i choose my x axis to be along this uh, stick and my y axis to be perpendicular and in this case my solution would uh, be because the now the f uh, now i write my force i i break down my forces into their x and y components but x axis is along the direction uh, from o to that point so there would be no contribution due to the x component of this force when it is defined in this new axis but the only com uh, contribution would be from this y component okay which is given here okay um so uh, this is another problem from the book uh, we want to find the moment of the force uh, which is 500 newton force about the point o uh, so to find the moment uh, we would like to we can either find the perpendicular distance or we can break down the force into its x and y components okay so let me just re solve this one again yeah. so we have this bar here we have the origin o and the force is acting at this point somewhere here and this is 500 newton and we are given that this is 5 3 4 and this distance is given to be 3 meter okay uh, so now we are we want to find the moment of this force and to find the moment we would like to use the principle of moments uh, so we would like to break down this force into its uh, x component and y component. So I can always write it something like this. So this is going to be. Let me choose an axis. So this is my x axis and this is my y axis. So when I choose these axes, uh, so the my x component of this force is this, which is just 300. So this is going to be equal to 500 divided by 5 times 3, which is equal to 300 newton. Similarly, this force is going to be equal to 400 newtons. Okay. So now I have broken down my 
force into its x component and y component. Maybe it's better if I write the two components at the same point. So this component is here. This is x component which is 300 newton and the y component is 400 newtons. Okay, so now I have the x and the y components. So the total moment. So again, I am going to assume that my counterclockwise is positive. Uh, so this simplifies our problem because this x component would not produce any moment because the perpendicular distance for this x component is zero because this force, the line of action of this force, passes through the point O. So the only contribution to the moment of this force would be from around the point O would be from the 400 newton force and that would be given as 400 times 3 into this 1200 into meter. So uh, you can already see that using the principle of moments we can simplify our calculations. If we were to find the moments directly, we would have to find the perpendicular distance, which is going to be something like this. And uh, again, uh, this can be done, but you would need uh, a few trigonometric tricks to find this distance B. Uh, but this is a much easier method and uh, more um, intuitive also. Okay. Uh, so here we have an, a very sim similar example. So uh, we want to find the moment of the force about the point O. Uh, again, we would break down this force into its x and y components. And uh, uh, but in this case, both the x and the y components would have a non-zero moments, and we would sum up those moments at the end. Uh, I would go into more detail of this exercise uh, in our live lecture, uh, but I have sketched the solution for you. In, in this video lecture okay <clears throat> uh, so uh, now we move to vector moments or moments in three dimensions so in this problem we are given that in each case set up a determinant to find the moment of the force about the point p so we want to find we we are not required to find the moment as such we are just required to set up the determinant um, so so uh, i'll solve this one and okay so we have this force f f is already given so f is equal to minus 2 i hat plus 3 j hat plus 4 k okay and so the only question and we want to find the moment from the point this is going to be equal to r cross f so the only question is to find this vector r and uh, we have done a lot of work for position vectors uh, so I would we can just read it off so we want to go from point p to the point of action of force which is this point r so we want to go from this point p to point r so we can just find uh, vector r so this vector first and this vector second then or we can do it directly so i try to write the vector r directly uh, just because we have done so much work on position vectors in the previous in the previous lectures that if uh, i understand that if you have any confusion regarding previous uh, position vectors you would go back and watch those lectures and clarify those confusions for yourself okay so this vector r uh, so its x component is going to be positive and it's going to be equal to 5 i hat and the y component is uh, again is going to be negative and it is going to be minus 4 k and so the z component so here the point p is 3 meters above from uh, the x y plane and the point this point of action of force is 2 meters above that point uh, above the x y plane which means that to go from point p to point uh, point of action of force we would have to go down by minus here so this is the vector r 
And now using the uh, determinant form, we can just say that this is equal to i hat, j hat, k hat. And now here we just first write five minus four minus one. This is two, three, four, and two has a minus sign. So here we have set up the determinant as was asked in our problem. Okay, uh, just to reiterate this r vector. So we want to go from this point P to this point, and so to do that, I have to move four meters in the x direction to get to here, and then one meter further to move here. So it's going to be equal to five meters if I want to go from point P to the point of action of force. And then in y axis, I would have to move two meters here and another two meters here. So that adds up to four meters. That is why we have four meters. And so in the z axis, we would first from going from point P. So this is three meters high. This is two meters high. So that means I have to go lower by one meter. So that is how I get this r vector. Okay. So uh, uh, we will look at one more example. Um, so uh, I will sketch this one, but there is one more example in these slides that we will look at in these video lectures. Okay. Uh, so we have these two forces. One force is uh, 100 i hat minus 200 120 j hat plus 75 k hat, and then we have a second force minus 200 i hat plus 250 j hat and 100 k hat. Both of the forces are given in pounds. And they act at a point A, and we want to determine the resultant moment produced by these forces about point O. And so we want to find the resultant moment around this point O. Uh, so rather than just finding these resultant moments separately, we can add these forces because both of these forces are acting at the same point. So we can just add these forces together and then find the moment of the resultant of these two forces. Uh, so here we are using the principle of moments in the other direction uh, when we have these two forces acting at the same point we just add them together and then find the moment of those two forces together okay uh, so r vector is again is not very difficult we go four feet in the x direction and three feet in the z direction and five feet in the y direction to get to this point which simply means that the, the uh, r vector is going to be equal to 4 i hat 5 j hat plus 3 k hat okay and the f vector is already given so i hope you can you guys can solve this on your own okay so this is the last problem i want to solve in this video lecture uh, so uh, so this is uh, we want to prove an identity uh, which basically says that if we have these three vectors a b and c we want to show that a dot b cross c is equal to 0 implies that all of these three vectors lie in the same plane. So I would sketch why if this identity is equal to 0 then that definitely means that all of these three vectors should be in the same plane. Okay. So first of all let me look at any two vectors whenever we do a cross product of any two vectors whenever we do cross product of two vectors uh, the resultant of these two vectors lies outside the plane of these two vectors what i mean by that if i have these two vectors a so much should be b cross c so the resultant of these two vectors is going to be outside the board so it is going to be uh, protruding out of this quite close okay so, so anytime I have two vectors, uh, any two vectors which are, uh, you know, distinct, uh, that means that one vector is just not uh, uh, multiple of the other vector, these two vectors form a plane. So I can say that my vector B cross C, they form a plane. Um, so and i know that the cross product of these two vectors is going to be perpendicular to that plane and so so let's here i would like to draw the cross product 
So let's say we have x, y, z. So just to give you an example, let's assume that our two vectors lie in the x, y plane. So this is vector c vector b. So when I do b cross c, my resultant vector is going to be in the z direction because I do b cross c, it's going to be in the minus c direction. So this is just b cross to c. Okay. And now we do a dot product with the third vector and we are told that this is equal to 0. And let's recall that uh, one of the properties of dot product is that if two vectors have a dot product of 0 uh, and the vectors it themselves are not 0, that means that these two vectors, uh, they should be perpendicular. Okay. So that means this vector A has to be perpendicular to the cross product of B cross C, which just means that A should lie in the same plane as B cross C. Uh, so that just proves it, that all of these three vectors should lie in the same plane. Okay. So there is one trivial case that we should also consider that if B cross C is already zero, uh, that would mean that B cross C uh, are they lie in the same line then um, a and a dot that 0 is equal to 0 so then we can always form a plane using two vectors so that's a trivial case uh, that if I want to be mathematically rigorous I have to take care of that also okay so there are a certain a few more examples in the, in these lecture notes uh, lecture slides but we would go through those uh, examples during our regular uh, online class so that is it for today uh, i'll see you next time inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh